Saturday the 23rd of May and this is our morning devotion. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I was conducting a service in a residential home and I asked the residents what their memories were of the day that the outbreak of the Second World War was announced. Apparently it was a very dark, overcast, wet day with thunder and lightning. And they spoke of this awful feeling that, that swept over them. How is this happening to us? How is this happening in my lifetime? And quickly it felt as though everything had been swept away and they'd been uprooted from everything that they knew. Ezekiel was living in Jerusalem during the first Babylonian attack when the city was spared but they took off a large number of uh, prisoners into exile. Ezekiel was one of those prisoners and his book begins five years later and he has this very strange vision as he sits by the Kebar River in Babylon and he sees the glory of the Lord in a sense coming over the river. This is the glory that had been seen in Mount Sinai and also that was over the Ark of the Covenant in the temple in Jerusalem. And it raised an obvious question. What is the glory of the Lord doing as it is described as in the land of the Babylonians when really it was meant to be back in Jerusalem in the temple? His visions go on to explain what's happening. Effectively, they reveal that the, the Lord's glory has left the temple in Jerusalem, the result of Israel's utter refusal to change their ways. And there's worse to come. Jerusalem is going to fall. The temple is going to be destroyed. There is going to be large scale exile. But no one would listen to the warnings. We know that also from looking at Jeremiah. A significant disaster is falling upon the world of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is living at a hard time with tough things going on around him. In Babylon, he's given the hard and thankless task of calling the people, a stubborn people, to change their ways. And throughout the book, Ezekiel continually reminds Israel that God is now to punish his people for punishment's sake. He speaks of judgment on Israel. He speaks about judgment on the nations, and that most probably is Israel's enemies. And then in chapter 33, bad news. Uh, a newly arrived exile from Jerusalem brings the news that the city has fallen, that the temple is destroyed. Is this the end? Is God done with Israel? Is it all over for them as his chosen people? Then in chapters 34 to 37, we again see this significant swing of tone to one of hope and promise. God hasn't totally abandoned his people. The Kebar River vision says, seems to portray that he has gone into exile with them. It stirs up the Old Testament imagery of God being gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. See, even at their worst, even at a moment of crises in their relationship, even when he's thrown them out of the promised land, even when he enacts the punishment terms of the covenant that he has made with his people, even then he's still working for them and for their good. His heart is still with them. He's going to raise up a new David, a messianic king. He's going to transform Israel. But it will not only be a physical transformation whereby they get to return home again. It is also going to be a spiritual transformation as he brings about in them new hearts, taking away their hard, unyielding, impenetrable hearts such as Pharaoh uh, when the plagues were being visited upon Egypt and giving them soft, pliable, teachable hearts 
that will accept his life-giving spirit, such as, for example, the Roman centurion with Jesus or Jairus going to Jesus for his daughter's healing, opening his heart to something much bigger than himself and more than he can understand. And the change will happen as they receive his life-giving spirit. His spirit would come and enter into the hearts of his people, something that we're going to remember on Sunday week with Pentecost. Ezekiel lived through a traumatic time, time when everything was turned on its head and normal life disappeared. Strange new routines came in that, that seemed to wrench at familiar things just like we're going through. Those natural actions like a hug or a handshake, the cuddling of a newborn baby, mostly swept away. Having to stand at a distance from family and friends and the emotions of separation, loss and longing, whilst all the while wondering about our jobs, our education, our health and our futures. Like Ezekiel, We've suddenly found ourselves living through a traumatic moment in history. Hard times with tough circumstances. It's like we've been swept away, uprooted from the life that we have lived in. And there's no quick or easy resolution to it. And there may not be for us. Or, God willing, there will be. But this is a time for new hearts and a new spirit in us, to receive from God, to look towards God and find our strength in him, to rest in him so that we have peace and to be filled by his spirit so that we will not be overwhelmed. Let's pray together. Lord, because it is beyond our seeing, it can be beyond our understanding that in the midst of hard times and tough situations, you can be working for our good. It doesn't make sense. There seems to be no logic to it. Impossible. But you are there, God. The God through whom all things are possible, who works in ways that are not our ways, who can do things that are beyond our imagining. We need faith to know you are in everything and that in everything that things can work out for our good. When we believe at a time such as this, our faith can be built up because we not only hope, but we have the opportunity to see hopes fulfilled. May that be our experience. Today, give us strength to trust you with everything that's going on. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so God's blessing be upon you today.